I'm going to stop there. Hi, this is Dan here, and I'm going to teach you how to play that chord progression and a couple more that contain harmonics. So I'm just going to show you the chord progression, explain a little bit about the theory behind the chord progression, and then what notes you can play over it to, to you know, to make up a solo along with the chord progression. I'm playing everything into a TC electronic looper pedal, and if you want to know how to do that, watch this video right here. But let's start with that chord progression, and all I've got are two chords here, G to C. Now specifically, they're not exactly G and C, there's different types of chords called sus2 chords. So I'll just explain what that means very quickly. So this harmonic here, where you just play on the fifth fret of the A string, just over the metal fret itself, that particular note is an A, and then when you do the same thing on the fifth fret of the D string, that note is a D. Now, in conjunction with the G that you're playing, you have a root, you have a second or a nine and a fifth. That's what a sus2 chord is. It's got no third in it, it's just got those notes in it, and it sounds quite pretty sounding chord. That's how I'm playing it. So what I'm doing is I'm playing the G with my first finger on the third fret, and I'm just barring the little finger across the fifth fret, just over it, not pressing down, just touching the string, and then coming away. I'm choosing to go thumb, index, middle, in order to pluck all of those notes. When you go to the C, it's exactly the same. You just go down to the C, third fret, A string. You can use your index and middle fingers as well, making sure you come away when you pluck. Now I did a rhythm there because it's very exposed, it's very slow, so I did something like this. You've got to be quite precise in order not to hit any other notes, but that's that's the chord progression. One bar of G sus2 to one bar of C sus2. Now, when I'm playing a solo over that, and this is great practice to do that, to, to work on the melodic side of your brain. You know, us bass players, we usually play roots. Obviously, let's never lose sight of that, but this lesson is more about how we can unlock a bit more creativity. So I'll press the looper back in for that chord progression. I'll play a few things and I'll explain what it is I'm doing. First things first. That's the key. That's the set of notes, that's the scale that those two chords come from. That's why it works. We can play G major over that. So this is the shape I'm using right here on the 10th fret of the A string. That fits over the whole thing. And your job as a soloist is to come up with melodic ideas that don't sound like you're playing a scale up and down, as I was doing there. So you take fragments of notes and you inject a bit of personality and flair into it by playing different rhythms and thinking in terms of phrases. You know, we talk in phrases, sentences, we stop, we pause, and music is a language and that's how you think about it. So I was doing a lot of this. Oh, when the saints go marching in. It's just the root, and then I'm just going third, fourth, fifth, fifth notes of the scale. At no point am I ever thinking this when I'm playing. You need to know the scale well enough that you can just use your ear to guide you rather than patterns, although there are patterns all over the bass. So that's a little statement. Then I'm descending the scale. 
and you can perhaps practice that just one octave. You can record this into a digital audio workstation or get some sort of a looper pedal to do exactly what I'm doing. And you can just treat it like an exercise, you know, just play the scale up and down just to get used to the pattern and the sound and then start to break out into something more musical. <laughs> That was all G major pentatonic, which has a relative minor, E minor pentatonic. So if you know either of those two scales are the same shapes, that's a really, really good scale to solo over. It's quite easy and it's very pleasing sounding. And you need to know it in different patterns so that you can do things like that. That's a slide. That's vibrato, which is what singers do. Bends, hammer-ons. Short notes, long notes, pull-offs. Those articulations bring the playing to life. Okay, so that's that chord progression. I've got two more, let's move on. Okay, similar-ish now, but rather than major key, we are now in a minor key. So here, was, here are the chords. And we're just playing two harmonics throughout the whole thing. Now these harmonics are the same as the note underneath it. That isn't always the case. So we have a D and an A both on the seventh fret of the G and the D strings, okay? So I'll go through it very slowly. And I am arpeggiating there. That's when you play notes of a chord separately. That's guitarists do that all the time. So I'm barring my first finger. That's using one finger to play more than one string. And that's lying across the seventh fret. So once again, you don't press down. You just touch the string lightly just over the metal fret. Then I'm using my third finger for the F sharp on the ninth fret of the A string. That is a D major arpeggio. That's the root, that's the third. When we have a chord that doesn't have the root note as the lowest note, we're inverting it. So this is an inversion. And when you have the third, which is this F sharp in this case, as the lowest note, it's called a first inversion. So that is what slash chords are. So this is a D forward slash F sharp. That's a D over F sharp. It's a D chord. Instead of the D as the bass, it's the F sharp as the bass. And those kind of inversions give you, very often songwriters use this, to transition from one chord to another in a very smooth way, usually a semitone or, or half steps, like this. Okay, and that is the next chord. You use your little finger, keep this the same here, and use your little finger to fret the G on the 10th fret. It's the same as that chord, G sus2. Then release your little finger, play the open A string. That's an A sus4. Sus stands for suspended. I didn't mention that earlier, perhaps I should have done. So you've got, a, and another A, and that is a D. And that's the fourth away from an, from an A. And that's called a sus4. It's quite an open sound that wants to move somewhere else. And that's where we're going. We're going to the B minus seven after that, so. As soon as you're done playing that, actually I did it a different way, but the, um, one way that makes more sense here is to do as, as little movements as you can. In bass technique in general, that's kind of a good rule, which I broke just now, but let's do it now. So move your first finger from here where it is 
down to the B there. And what you're doing is you're fretting on the fingertip with the B and then you're just backing that finger down again onto the fret, over the fret, the seventh fret. And you're going thumb, index, middle, if that's how you're playing, or. If you've never done this kind of thing before, it's quite difficult technically to get everything together. It's quite a good exercise, especially for this fretting hand, because you have to you have to be precise. You've got to play right on the fingertip, curl your fingers round. If you don't do that, then the chord won't ring out. So it's a very good stretching exercise as much as timing and everything else. So the key we're in now is B natural minor. And another great scale to use is B minor pentatonic. And also... I love that. I love players like David Gilmore and old blues players who use that blues scale. Which is just a B minor, in this case, B minor pentatonic scale with a flat five. There's a B here, ninth fret, D string. Walking up the scale. Actually, start. I'm starting there. Ninth fret of the A string, just the fifth. So I'm just taking a fragment of the scale and making something up that sounds to my ears melodic. I think you need to listen to some soloists that you like and transcribe what they do, figure, figure it out by ear, listen to the techniques, and that's how you incorporate you know, players that you like, their style, into your own, and you eventually come up with your own thing. You know, I do that all the time. That's a slide, so again, I, I'm kind of in this minor pentatonic shape. I'm going sliding there, this is on the D string, I'm going frets 14 to 16, sliding, and immediately playing an A on the 14th fret of the G string. Then I'm doing the slide in reverse, ending up on a D, 12th fret D string. Hammer on, same notes. And there's that B there. So stuff like that, just take a few notes from a scale and I'm rearranging them a bit in order to do a slide. Three notes on one string there because that, that lends itself well to that particular technique. Perhaps take notes like that and just mess around with just that. Invariably, your ear will take you somewhere else. I wanted another note there. It's that B. So it really does help you to learn and map out the fretboard doing this kind of thing. You know, a lot of the time we're down this end playing bass lines and 99% of the time I've ever played gigs, that's where I am, that's what I love doing, that's my job. I hardly ever do this, but it's just fun to do and it kind of unlocks a bit of creativity. Let's move on to the last one. So I've got a slightly different thing now. We've done major, we've done minor, and this is slightly out of the box here. Okay, this is a really interesting sounding chord progression. And I love this. I love modes. I love 
different sounds that aren't the major scale and the natural minor scale. By the way, those two keys probably will account for a lot of the music you play on bass. The, a major key and a minor key, very kind of standard. And something like this wouldn't be, it's a little bit different. So what I've got here are two major seven chords a minor third apart. I've got an E flat major seven going to a C major seven, but it's not quite that. It's not quite a major seven. It's got a sharp four in each of the of the chords, okay? And that forces us into a, a mode. That's why I deliberately wrote this this way. The other two solos I did, I could just noodle around the same shapes throughout the entire chords progression because all of those chords from the first two chord progressions belonged to one key and that was quite easy. This one, you have to play one thing over the E flat chord and one thing over the C chord and it, it's a little bit different. So let's have a look at the chords individually. Okay, so we've got um, E flat. Now here, it's, when you've got harmonics on the fifth fret, it's quite interesting. So you've got your, it isn't the note underneath it, if you see what I mean. So look, if I go fifth fret G string, that's actually the fifth fret on the next string sort of underneath it. So that it, it messes with your head a bit, but we've got therefore a major third and an E flat. So this is how you would work out what chord it is you're playing. So that's an E flat major chord so far. And that note, the harmonic over the fifth fret of the D string, that's the note D, so that's a major seventh. So that's E flat major seventh, which is a nice sounding chord. Now, if I put the harmonic on the seventh fret of the D string in, which I'm going to do, that's a sharpened fourth. And all of those notes come from what's called the Lydian mode which is this, it looks exactly the same as a major scale, except it has a sharpened fourth. So this is it. Any mode or scale can give you a chord. You can voice a chord differently. That means just what note within the scale you choose to put into the chord. So here I've got a root, a major seven, a major third. So far quite standard. By putting that note in there, the sharp four, I'm really forcing this Lydian sound into proceedings, okay? So every chord has a scale that is related to it, and that's kind of sort of what this lesson is about too. E flat Lydian over that. And then it's the same mode, but just on a C now. So this is the chord progression here. C, third fret, A string. It's actually the same notes again. So, so far that's a C sus2, we played that earlier. As soon as I put that note in there, this is the harmonic on the fourth fret of the D string. And you just have to, it's not directly over the fret this one, you just gotta move slightly towards the nut. And you get it, that's a sharp four. So one thing you could do to start with, is just to play that in and just play E flat Lydian over the first one and C Lydian over the next one. that mode that's probably my favorite mode you hear a lot of film music if it's in space or wants to elicit a emotion of wonder you hear the Lydian mode being used a lot it's just a great great sound obviously this doesn't sound as poppy or standard as the other two I, I, I was playing but you know you can really explore with this so here's another thing I was latching on to in order to try to make the transition from one scale to another um, smooth and more musical. This is what I was doing. So 
So what I was doing was just staying in one part of the bass and over the E flat I found that these notes fit. Okay, so we've got E flat F G frets 8, 10 to 12 on the G string. And very briefly, I'm using extended fingering here because it's not a four fret span where you might use one finger per fret. It's a five fret span. So what I'm doing is little finger on the 12th fret and then, you know, the second finger does line up nice and naturally on the 10th, but it's this first finger that needs to stretch out in order to get that eighth fret in there. That's called extended fingering. It's brilliant. Especially for this sort of three note per string pattern. If you can't do that, at least yet, you can jump around a bit and even, you know, use one finger, whatever. Then you do exactly the same frets on the D string now. Okay, so those notes in that pattern works over the E flat. But the C Lydian, the next chord, the notes, all these notes do not fit. Some of them do. In fact, the C and the D do. That's the 10th and the 12th fret of the D string. But then I've got that little fragment there. So that's all you have to do just for this tiny little exercise here is to remember this pattern for the E flat Lydian. And then it shares some notes. That's what makes it sound really good. So you can experiment with things like that and, and even just focus on some of those shared notes. That's a cool thing to do as well. That's the E flat again. So I'm just going up the E flat Lydian scale mode there. And I just stopped there because I, I, I'm thinking about this. I'm practicing. I want, I know, I can see here this is a B flat. The closest note in C Lydian to this B flat is just one fret higher B. It's the major seventh. That's a lovely thing to do, that kind of thing where you. A bit like the inverted chord progression I was showing you earlier, where it's a very smooth movement between notes. That kind of stops you doing this thing that, you know, bass players understandably do when soloing, which is to just jump to a root that you know and play from the lowest note upwards and then jump to the next root and that kind of thing. This sort of makes things sound more musical. Okay, so there you have it. You've got your three chord progressions. Mix up the, the rhythms and the chords, uh, you know, if you make up something else. Different rhythms, different orders of the chords. There are, of course, hundreds of other configurations and different harmonic chords you can, you can um, play, which Reminds me, I've got this uh, free resource book that you get if you sign up to a, a newsletter that I have, which you can all, you know, unsubscribe very easily if you don't want it. But it's a very useful book and it's got load of harmonic chord progressions in it. Just remember that. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link below. Otherwise, there's another chord progression video I've got that I'll put a link to here that you might be interested in if you like this kind of solo plus bass chords approach, which I, I'm doing a lot of that just in practice. Just, I find it, I love doing it. It just sounds good and it makes me want to play and I'm thinking about different combinations, different notes, and maybe a little bit different to what I normally play, but I'm hoping that you like it too. Any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching, see you next time.